Hello and welcome to the Daily Space. My name is Eric Mattis, filling in for Annie Wilson while she takes a well-deserved vacation. I've been behind the scenes as one of the show's writers, and I appreciate this chance to present my works. Most weekdays, the Cosmic Quest team is here putting science in your brain. Today, however, is for Rocket Ronda. Let's get to it, shall we? First up, on October 27th at 0619 UTC, the Chinese Quezhou 91A, uh, which the Jilin 1 Galfin 02F commercial imaging satellite into sun synchronous orbit from the Jiuqian Satellite Launch Center in China. Jilin 1 Galfin 02F is a high resolution optical imaging satellite sensitive to visible and near infrared wavelengths. It is capable of 75 centimeter ground resolution in panchromatic mode with a better than 40 kilometer image width. At this resolution, the satellite can capture clear images of things like roads, driveways, and cars. The Quezhou 1A is a four-stage launch vehicle developed from the two-stage solid uh, DF-21 road mobile medium-range ballistic missile first deployed in 1991. With one additional solid stage and a liquid propellant four-stage to turn into a space launch vehicle capable of putting 400 kilograms into orbit. Like the ballistic missile it is derived from, the rocket is launched from the back of a transport truck parked instead of on a concrete pad. Jilin 1 Galfin 02F replaces 02C, which was lost in a failed Quezhou 1A launch last year. And now let's talk about a much bigger rocket which launched to the ISS. Next up, on October 28th, a Bidite UTC, a Russian Soyuz 2.1A launched the Progress MS-18 spacecraft towards the International Space Station. This is the 1,949th launch of the R-7-derived Soyuz since its first over 64 years ago. Let's watch the launch. On board the craft was 1,480 kilograms of equipment, which is about the mass of two cows. This included five scientific experiments for the Russian cosmonauts to perform, 560 kilograms of propellant to be used for boosting the ISS in its orbit, 420 kilograms of drinking water, and 43 kilograms of compressed oxygen to refresh the supply on the Russian segment. After a leisurely two days of catching up with the ISS, Progress MS-18 successfully docked autonomously to the backport of the Thaisa module on Saturday, October 30th. After several hours of leak checks, the hatch from the station to the spacecraft was opened. These leak checks have always been standard procedure, but since the discovery of a series of cracks in the Thaisa module's docking compartment in 2019, they are much more important. Progress will stay at the station, providing occasional reboost burns as needed until it departs for a destructive reentry in the South Pacific in spring 2022. From one launch we know a whole lot about Stu Chinese launches with more details. Next, up on November 3rd at 0745 UTC, a Chinese Long March 2C launched the second pair of Yaogan 32 satellites into orbit from the Chen Satellite Launch Center. The satellite's mission was not officially disclosed, but a launch animation showed a satellite with many antennas. This suggests that it could potentially have the signals intelligence mission, where the satellites collect transmission from other countries' equipment, equipment such as radars and communications antennas to determine their capabilities. The rocket again used a UM Jung 1S upper stage to put the satellites in the intended orbit, like the RSW launch recovered on August 20. This is the third flight of this particular variant of the variant 
of the YZ-1 upper stage, optimized for Long March 2C. The launch was previously expected for this past month, but was delayed until late October for unknown reasons. China launched three more Yaogan satellites, the Yaogan 35 triplet, on November 6th at 0300 UTC on a Long March 2D from Chichang. No details about the satellites were released. After the break, we'll be back to discuss more Chinese launches. On November 5th at 0219 UTC, a Chinese Long March 6 launched the SDGSAT-1 Earth Observation Satellite into a sun-synchronous orbit from the Haiyuan Satellite Launch Center in China. Let's watch the launch. SDGSAT, also called Guangmo, or Wide Eye, is a Earth science satellite developed to support the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals for 2030, according to the Xi'an Aerospace Power Research Institute. It has three instruments, a thermal infrared sensor, a low light sensor, and a multispectral imager with a swath width of 300 kilometers. This impressive imager gives it the ability to record the entire Earth every 11 days looking for science for human impact on the environment in support of both. The Long March 6 is a relatively new Chinese rocket, and this is only its eighth launch since its first launch in 2015. The Long March 6 is the smallest member of the new generation of Long March rockets, which includes the Long March 5, 6, 7, and 8. These newer rockets are designed to use non-toxic propellant and higher performing rocket propellant one and liquid oxygen in all stages instead of the very stable but super toxic unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide. RP1 and LOX require special ha handling both on the ground and in the rocket to prevent problems like oxygen boiling off and pr pressure rupturing the rocket's tank. The Long March 6 can put up to 1080 kilograms into a sun synchronous orbit. On November 9th at 0051 UTC, a Japanese Epsilon 2 rocket launched the RISE 2 technology demonstration satellite and eight others into orbit from the Uchinura Space Center in southern Japan. Let's watch the launch. The Epsilon-2 is a three- or four-stage rocket using three solid stages from the H-2 and U-5 rockets with an optional liquid propellant fourth stage to increase payload to orbit and insertion accuracy. This flight used the liquid fourth stage. The launch was delayed several times from last month due to a problem with the ground system, the vehicle, weather, and the need to use the ground systems for another launch. This is only the fifth launch of an Epsilon rocket since the first one in 2013. It is designed to put payloads up to 500 kilograms into a 700 kilometer orbit, like it did with this mission. It replaced the U-5 rocket, which was retired back in 2006. RISE-2 is the main payload on the flight. It is a 110 kilogram small satellite which hosts several small including a new kind of low-power space-related microcomputer designed by Sony, a new fiber optic gyroscope, a commercial off-the-shelf star tracker, a 3D printed antenna, and inertial measurement unit. And of the eight other small satellites, uh, Habari, 
is a 50 kilogram microsatellite which will test using solar array paddles to provide torque to change the satellite attitude. Uh, reaction wheels and control moment gyroscopes are currently used to control satellite attitude, but it is very difficult to get both accuracy and stability using these systems. Uh, it is a, has a small ultraviolet telescope to take advantage and confirm the pointing accuracy of the solar array paddles. And the accuracy is host, hoped to be less than 10 arc seconds. Uh, CSAT is a 46 kilogram satellite which will take images of the ground in both near and far infrared and combine them for better observation of heat sources. It is expected to be the first of a constellation of such satellites. DRUMS, or Debris Removal Unprecedented Microsatellite, is a 62 kilogram small sat which will test orbital debris removal technologies. TycoSat 4 will be used to provide uh, uh, really fine microgravity for life science and material science applications where crude space stations provide too much disturbance. It weighs 52 kilograms and is developed by Tycho College. Asterisk has a large deployable sheet which will be used as a dust or space debris sensor. It is designed to be low cost so it was integrated into a three unit cube set the size of a loaf of bread and which only weighs four kilograms. There are three other CubeSats which Patreons can read about the about in this week's bonus material. After the break, learn about the mission that started our 21 years of continuous human presence in this week in rocket history. This week in rocket history, the first International Space Station expedition. The first module of the International Space Station had been launched all the way back in 1998, but over the next two years, no crew had spent more than a handful of days at the station. Crews went up, did a little bit of work, putting the space station together, and then left it mothballed. That change on October 31st, 2000 was the launch of Soyuz TM-31. On board were NASA astronaut uh, William Shepard and Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gitzenko and Sergei Krikalev. After two days of rendezvous, they docked to the fledgling space station, then only consisting of three modules, and began, it, began a busy four months of operations. Their first order of business was to unload the Progress M1-4 resupply spacecraft that was full of supplies for their mission. This was not an easy task. The uncrewed spacecraft's automatic docking system had failed, so it had to be manually docked to the station. And that was just in the first month of their mission. During the four-month stay, Expedition 1 would be visited by three space shuttles, Endeavour, Atlantis, and Discovery, and would witness the addition of three new modules to the station. In between the shuttle visits and constructing tasks, the crew performed a packed program of science experiments, including taking over 700 photos of the Earth. Yes, astronauts taking photos of Earth in their free time had scientific value. The first proper scientific experiment flown to the ISS was the plasma crystal experiment from the Max Planck Institute of Extraterrestrial Physics, where special crystals were grown in dust suspended in plasma. The ISS was the best place for this experiment because microgravity allows the growth of really large crystals. SDS-97 on Endeavour arrived on December 2nd, 2000 and brought up the first two solar panels for the station's massive integrated truss system. This large installation was done by the Endeavour's crew requiring three EVAs. A hatch between the station and Endeavour was closed until the work was done, taking almost a week. Once the solar arrays were installed, the hatch was opened and both crews structurally tested the new configuration and at long last opened the hatch to node 1, the Unity module, which had been closed off because there was not enough power to heat it. The crew of the shuttle brought even more supplies on board the station and then undocked on December 9th. The next visitor for Expedition 1 was SDS-98, arriving on February 8th, 2000. Atlantis brought a major component of the ISS, the US lab, officially called Destiny. Installing Destiny took some reconfiguration of the station. 
one of the station's two docking adapters, or PMAs, was moved from the end of Node 1 to the top of the truss temporarily. Then the lab was moved onto the port re recently vacated by the PMA using the arm on the special. Then the PMA was put on the end of Destiny, completing installation. Uh, this took three EVAs by the shuttle crew. SDS-98 also marked a milestone in station construction. Instead of using reaction control thrusters to maintain the orientation of the complex, ground control switched on the control moment gyros located on the truss on February 13th. Uh, control moment gyros are a special type of reaction wheel that don't need to be desaturated because they constantly spin. They change spacecraft orientation by being moved side to side instead of being sped up and being and slowed down like a reaction wheel. A reaction wheel needs to be periodically desaturated or slowed down once it's been sped up to maximum speed. This involves firing a thruster in the opposite direction of the spin. Not having to use thrusters to change the station's attitude or desaturate reaction wheels saves propellant. The rest of SDS-98's time at the station was spent doing three EVAs to attach the new lab more permanently to the station, including routing for and data cables on the outside to their spots on Destiny, and installing handrails and other components to make moving around the station easier on future spacewalks. After SDS-98, another Progress spacecraft, Progress M44, brought up another several tons of supplies to the station and docked the port that M1-4 had departed the previous month. The Expedition 1 crew unloaded the progress and packed its supplies into the station. The final shuttle to visit Expedition 1, SDS-102, arrived on March 10, 2001. Now, since its primary mission was to swap out crews, no new permanent module was brought up on this trip. It did, however, do something new. It attached the first multi-purpose logistics module to the ISS. All four modules were named after famous Italians, with this particular module bearing the name Leonardo. The multi-purpose logistics module was designed to be brought up with supplies and loaded with experiment samples and other things to be brought back to Earth. For the return trip, it would be put back into the shuttle's payload bay it was attached to Node 1 and was unloaded by the combined crew of 10, a record at the time. The crew of SDS-102 also did two EVAs, one to again move to PMA to allow Leonardo to be birthed, and the other to add some components to the station's truss to prepare for the Canada arm, which was to come. Discovery undocked on March 19, 2001, leaving X leaping the Expedition 2 crew of James Foss, Yuri Yusuchev, and Susan Helms on the ISS. After the break, we'll be back with our weekly statistics and random space fact. Stay tuned! To wrap things up, here's a running tally of a few spaceflight statistics for the current year. Toilets currently in space. Seven. Four installed on the ISS one on the Soyuz, one on the Shenzhou, and one on Tianhe. Total 2021 orbital launch attempts, 110, including nine failures. Total satellites from launches, uh, 1,528. I keep track of orbital launches by where they launched from, also known as spaceport. Here's that breakdown. China, 43. USA, 35. Kazakhstan, 10. Russia, 8. French Guiana, 4. New Zealand, 4. India, 2. Japan, 2. Iran, 1. South Korea, 1. Your right of space fact is the patch for the multi-purpose logistics module to fix a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle in a NASA space suit. NASA is able to have this patch made by giving its copyright to the studio that owns the character. It is a very cool patch. This has been The Daily Space. You can find more information on all of our stories, including images, at dailyspace.org. And always, as always, we're here thanks to the donations of people like you. If you like our content, please consider joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash cosmosx.